The Electricity Supply Board of Ireland is rapidly gaining an international reputation for the quality of its consultancy and training facilities and expertise. At its cable training school in Dublin, a student from the state of Bahrain in the Arabian Gulf learned the latest techniques in the installation and jointing of underground electric cables. Martin Staunton, the senior instructor, conducts a practical and theoretical course. Irish engineers and administrators were given the task of advising on the expansion of electricity services in Bahrain. A part of the package was to provide training in specialist schools and on the job in Ireland and to send staff from Ireland to Bahrain to establish systems there, to train on the home ground and to design a craft training centre near Citra. Contracts were also signed with Egypt, Nigeria, Arabia, the Philippines and other countries. The training programme was extensive. Not far from Kalani, at one of Ireland's largest generating stations, at Tarbit, another Bahraini group studied the techniques of operating a modern power plant. This is one of the most modern of its kind in the world, so the students could be sure of being fully up to date. Tom Prendergast, one of Tarbit's control room operators, explains the operation of the complicated control panels to a student, Ahmed Ali Juma. Back at the classroom in the Charlie Training School, the visitors get a detailed rundown on the operation of a circuit breaker. That's a giant switch. The instructor is Jerry O'Reilly. But it's not all theory. The Bahrainis get every opportunity to test out their own skills. They learn the practicalities of wiring up meters and fuse boxes, because electricity isn't for free in Bahrain either, and their work is carefully checked out. There are no language problems. They all speak fluent English. They also get a chance to sparkle when they do some practical welding. One of the most important tasks in any electricity business is the operation of the network, that is, at the transformer and switch stations. Great care has to be exercised because of the high voltages, and the safety of the staff has to be guarded. Under the careful eye of the instructor, Martin Carney, the student opens the link to the network and earths the phases, so that it will be safe to work on this section. With the section isolated, the trainees can check out the mechanical workings of the remotely controlled switching gear. Familiarity can breed contempt, so all staff must be fully aware of the dangers and operate always to a strict safety code. Bahrain in the Arabian Gulf. One of the instructors who went there to provide some of the on-the-spot training is Tom English, who of course is Irish. Tom demonstrates how an overhead line has to be bound. lesson is readily absorbed and the trainee gets on with the job. Skills are quickly learned in Bahrain and it's not only the staff who are interested. If you want to speed up operations, there's nothing like a JCB. Jerry Kavanagh, who's a specialist in operating them, takes over a new pupil. He also has an audience. Jerry runs through the controls. Then he steps out and hands over to his protege and the best of luck with the driving test. It's quite a transformation from the Atlantic seaboard to the Gulf, but here in Awali, where most of the Europeans live, it's a pleasant and colourful place. The Irish families who come out, many with very young children, find that they enjoy it. Even after a hard day's work, they can be sure of a game. No weather worries, of course. Afterwards, there's the refreshing plunge into a cool pool. (laughs) 
he must have passed the test. This is the advanced stage where the JCB takes the sweat out of pole handling. He's being watched pretty carefully by his mates, but he's doing a great job, and Tom English is proud of him. pole goes upright again and is planted firmly in a drier place to serve a new purpose, to carry energy to people. Of course, all the work is not outdoors. Many of the Irish team are on other jobs in this assignment, involving engineering management, accounting and administration tasks to ensure that all systems are adequate to back up the men in the field in areas such as design, stores, costing, etc. But back in the cooler climate of Ireland, the training goes on. For Muhammad Musa Ali, it was quite a thrill, the first time up with the climbing irons crammed to his boots. It may let you see the world from a different angle, but the first time is worse than the north face of the Eiger. However, once you're there, you can settle a little and get on with the job that has to be done. And the instructors seem to be pleased with the results. It's nice, though, to be heading back to the land again. A green and peaceful land. Mohammed Musa Ali, 5,000 miles from his homeland, kneels and prays, facing towards Mecca, at the end of an exciting day. Not all the Bahrainis who came to Ireland were concerned with the supply end of the business. They were interested also in improving other services which it can provide. This group of trainees in lighting design were impressed with the standards on Dublin's Stillorgan Road. Expert Brendan O'Dwyer explained it all to Nadia Ahmed Jassim and her companions. Ireland has much to offer in expertise to other nations and the people of the Electricity Supply Board are ready and willing to travel and to train. 